Germany has certain types of labor supports for workers. But as I discovered in doing the research for this book, actually not enough. In some ways, Germany is starting to adopt the, the worst parts of the United States. In Silicon Valley, you have a, a number of companies that have succeeded, but the types of jobs they're creating, um, I mean, you know, the, the, there's ones that we've heard of, like, uh, you know, Apple and Google, and, and then the newer ones like um, Uber and Airbnb. Um, uh, one of the companies that not many people have heard of, but I think in some ways is even more influential, is a company called Upwork. Upwork is a company um, based in Silicon Valley. They have about 250 regular employees. They can use technology to oversee about 10 million freelancers scattered all over the world, 10 million. And um, these freelancers on the Upwork platform are doing a whole range of things from videography, uh, you know, uh, computer software, uh, uh, digital design, um, you know, translation, but you also see architects, engineers, a whole range of occupations and industries that, you know, if I want to hire someone, I can go on there and hire someone. And it's actually an online labor auction in which the, the workers bid on the jobs. And so there you can see a German worker saying, oh, I'd like to make about you know, 60 euros an hour for this job. And an American worker saying, I'll take $70 an hour. And, and then you can see workers from Thailand, India, the Philippines saying, I'll take two euros an hour for this job. And those are highly trained workers. They have access to technology. They can produce the product, upload it to Dropbox or email it to the, the person that hired them. And, and so, I mean, it used to be companies outsourced jobs, but they had to set up plants in places like India in order to do that. They don't even need to do that anymore. They can just hire them online. And, and so it, it, it's, it's really creating this kind of race to the bottom in which German workers are literally competing against workers in developing countries for the same types of jobs. Um, so, and, and also these, jo these jobs, uh, they're contractors, they're freelancers. So they don't get any health care. They don't get any retirement, labor protection. They don't, even if they get injured on the job, there's no protection for them. No one pays for their, for their recovery. Uh, you're on your own, basically. It's, you know, you're on, it's called the on your own society, so to speak. And um, so this is, creates a huge problem. Uh, you know, many of the people working this way, they don't have a single employer and a full-time job where they get all their benefits and protections. Instead, they're working now for multiple businesses and they're juggling, juggling, juggling all these different jobs. And um, you know, even when you have a job today, it might last for two hours or another job might last for two days. You have to be looking for the next job and the job after that at the same time. So you're constantly juggling. Some people do okay with this kind of lifestyle, particularly when you're young, it seems to, you know, you like the flexibility, but as you get older, you want more stability, you want more income, uh, you want to not always be looking for the next job. And I've, I've interviewed in Germany a, a number of workers who were formerly freelancers and finally said, oh God, you know, after doing that for five or six years, I was exhausted. I, I would do anything to find a decent, regularly paid, uh, and even full-time job. I didn't care so much about the flexibility anymore. I wanted the security. So this is the trade-off in the economy today between flexibility and security. And the proposals in my book uh, are to, how, to, how can we make it so that workers can have both flexibility and security? I think that's really the key where Germany can lead. How do we figure out a way to make all these part-time jobs that people are working today into good jobs instead of the, the crummy jobs they are now with flexibility, yeah, but no security and lower wages? Some people say millennials are the first post-capitalist generation. They're geared to this digital economy, flexibility. You know, every, every generation of young people in the World War II era, you know, whether it was the hippies, the beats, the disco divers, they all liked flexibility. They all, no one wanted a career at that point, right? It's only as you get older that you start wanting these things. But the problem is that the current economy is not going to give you that. Because the trend in Germany, as in the United States, as in all over Europe, is towards fewer permanent full-time jobs. Germany today has, has fewer permanent full-time jobs than it had in 2000. In fact, 10% less. Germany has, is, re, is losing full-time permanent jobs faster than France and the UK. Germans like to lecture France about getting your economy together, and yet Germans are losing more full-time permanent jobs than they are in France. 
the trend in Germany as in the uh, uh, rest of Europe is towards greater temporary part-time jobs. Um, in fact, the number of Germans working part-time jobs now is 27% of your labor force. That's increased by about a quarter in recent years. You know, in the 2008-2009 collapse, economic collapse that happened worldwide, the jobs that were lost were the good, more full-time, more permanent jobs, and they are being replaced by the part-time temporary jobs. And in addition, in, that, in this, in this post-crisis economy, the jobs that are increasing are the low-wage jobs and the high-wage jobs, but there's not that many of the high-wage jobs. It's the middle-income jobs that are collapsing. Germany hasn't been as bad as, as some of the countries in Europe. It's created more middle-income jobs, but the middle-income jobs created are part-time and, and often temporary jobs. So these are, this is a big problem. A universal portable safety net. It's the idea that no matter how you work, whether you're a part-timer, temp worker, Werkvertrag, subcontractor, mini job, um, solo self-employed, it doesn't matter, or if you're permanent full-time, doesn't matter, you would get a basic safety net uh, that includes things like healthcare, retirement, injured worker compensation, unemployment compensation, all the things that we associate with social welfare. You would get that as a worker and that this would be there for you um, no matter how you work. If you want to work, you know, temporary jobs, uh, part-time jobs, you want to work for multiple businesses, or maybe that's the only way you can work because you can't find any other type of work, you aren't going to be shut out from the social security system, which is how it tends to work today. So um, the way we can do that, you know, the obvious question is, well, sure, that sounds great, but how do you pay for it, right? Well, here's how you pay for it. We create for each German worker what's called an individual security account. And then every business that hires that worker would pay a little bit more above the wage. And it wouldn't be that much. It would be, you know, two to three euros more above the wage that would be put into this individual security account for that worker. And then that worker would be able to use that money to purchase this, the welfare net that the worker needs. Um, some of it would go into existing infrastructure that you already have for the welfare net for things like um, health care, and the pension system, you know, uh, uh, you already have a, a, a fund for unemployment, but workers now don't have the money to put into that. So now they would have money that would go into that and making sure that they are covered and if something happens to them, they get injured on the job. And it the amount that the work, that the business would pay would be prorated to the number of hours that that worker works for that business. So if that worker only works 10 hours a week, that business would pay about a quarter of what normally that uh, business would pay towards a work, a 40 hour a week worker, full time worker for their safety net needs. And if, you, if we did it this way, every worker would be covered by some degree of social security. You could have negotiations about how, um, you know, how wealthy, how, how rich this sa safety net should be. You know, it might be a minimal one at first and you add to it over time. Businesses might compete against each other by trying to offer a more generous safety net than other businesses. There's all sorts of innovation that would happen in the economy around a system like this.